Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Welcome, welcome to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis, where every day I aim to bring you the latest in UFO reports and other fascinating stories from around the globe. Oh my goodness, what is today's date? Today is... Tuesday, February 27th, 2018, and on Fridays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, join me for my talk show, The Outlander, where I answer your emails, take your calls, and interview some intriguing guests. Just go to HeidiHollis.com for more information and IRNChat.com to chat, interact, and listen live to The Outlander Show. Blasting off with some UFO reports, Black Triangle sighting, and oh... My goodness, what? how do you use... Hwang Jang Duk Yang Ku, and I am not kidding. I believe that's how you say it. Um, it's occurred February 20th, 2018, and they state it has appeared for consecutive five years around the north area of Seoul every night. Oh, this is in Seoul, Korea. Okay, cool. Last May, one night, I looked up to the sky to see the stars in front of my house. Then suddenly, I happened to see the blinking, slowly flying object in the sky around 9 p.m. At first, I thought it was just a helicopter or something, but to my surprise, it didn't make any noise. It was so bizarre after that incident, in fact, I could often see the thing around two or three times a week on average. One day, I made up my mind to have a better look at it, so I climbed up the mountain and succeeded to see it very closely. Its shape is a black right triangle and three blinking lights on its three corners with a faint red light in the center. Huh, pretty interesting. Its size is approximately bigger than a helicopter, but not that much bigger than a plane. As I said earlier, it shows up every night regardless of weather conditions, clear or cloudy, hot or cold, rainy or snowy. It seems like it is searching for its missing fragments or missing comrades. Now, how would you know that? (laughs) It has a routine traveling course and rough timetables orbiting the town. It usually flies over the mountains or military facilities, especially the USA ones, laughing at human weapon systems. It may sound foolish, but I think it is conscious of me and watches my activities because it follows wherever I go. You see this, guys? Another one who thinks they have some kind of mental link with them. I always get a hunch it's going to be a a miniat. What? 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 I don't know what they're putting there. I think they mean imminent. Whatever I am, I tried to let Korean major news agency post about it. But they are reluctant to go deeper. Oh, they're like the USA more than you realize. If you want video clips of it, I'll be glad to send them. I have lots of video clips. It is not a mystical thing anymore, but to me, is a daily matter of factual routine. If you don't believe me, you can refer to Korean UFO Hunter on YouTube. He has also witnessed it with me most of the time. I am also anxious to know where this appears every night in northern Kiangkong province so fervently without a day off real area 51 is in korea oh oh you think so do you i beg to differ because area 51 is an area 51 in the u.s (laughs) i'm just saying okay all right moving on okay what is this one Mm -mm -mm. Okay, well, let's just try. This is a real brief one. UFO sighting in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. This occurred February 18th, 2018, traveling I-40 East. My son sent me this pic as he took it upon entering the Smoky Mountains without seeing the objects in the pic. I asked him if that was a UFO, and he said, 
No, he was sending a pic of the mountains. I will attach the original pic and zoom in on the pic. Okay, guys, we're going to click on this one. We're going to see. Sometimes it's just the least specting one that is just like, you know, such a cool picture. And there are photos actually attached. Way to go, MUFON. All right, let's click on this first one. Oh! Okay, all right, okay, okay, hold on. Let's look at the zoomed in one. I think they included that as well. Huh. Okay, so there's two streaks in the sky that could be kind of like a saucer shape, or it could be a reflection of something in the car. Just saying. It's hard to tell with this one. One of those odd, odd ones, middle of the road types. Who knows? Okay. That's cool, but it wasn't as impressive as some of the ones that I've seen. UFO sighting in Rancho Santa Margarita, California. Hmm. This occurred February 18, 2018. They state, we had just finished playing tennis at 11 a.m. when one of the players looked up and said, what is that? We observed the object for about five to ten minutes. At first, I thought it was silver balloons, but... They weren't gaining altitude or moving by the wind. And then, based on height and distance from us, it seemed too big to be balloons. It reminded us of this, but we couldn't see the movement caught in this video because of distance. And then they put a link here for a Texas UFO sighting. The photo below was taken from their video, but very much reminds us of what we saw. Okay. You guys could check that one on your own if you'd like. UFO sighting in Danvers, Massachusetts. This occurred February 18, 2018. Fast glowing reddish orange orb snaking around the night sky before abruptly moving upward and vanishing. Pa-ching! <laughs> oh, in more detail they stayed. I was driving into work at the local supermarket. I worked the night shift, and so it was already late at night. As I was pulling into the parking lot, I was admiring the clear, starry sky on this crisp winter night. It was 32 degrees out. Ugh. As I was looking out at the horizon in front of me, I saw what I thought was a large reddish-orange star, except it wasn't moving. It was snaking across the sky like it was on a roller coaster. Up and down, going from southwest to northwest. I wasn't scared, but was wondering what the hell it was. After about 30 seconds of this, I turned abruptly upward and vanished without a trace like it was swallowed up by the night sky. It didn't look solid at all. It was like made out of fire and was moving so fast, it was leaving a slight light trail behind it. When I looked at my car's clock, it was 10.52 p.m. I come from a family of retired fire, fighter and private pilots, and so I'm used to seeing all kinds of civilian and military aircraft, which this was nothing like this. There were no lights on it, but updated as if it was made of pure light. Updated? I don't know what they mean. Okay. It moved at impossible angles and was too fast to be man-made. It wasn't a meteor either because rather than fall to the earth, it moved back upwards towards space before disappearing and was moving too closely parallel to the horizon. I'm kind of sad I didn't get a chance to video it as it was brief as I was slowly driving. Don't you hate that? You totally missed a once in a lifetime opportunity. I know, I've been there. Okay, UFO sighting in Calgary, Alberta. Ooh, it's a UFO blast from the past. This occurred February 28th, 1991. Dreaming bright light, paralyzed, blacked out. When I woke up, had a weird mark on my upper arm. In more detail, not sure if it matters, but it has been in the back of my mind since I am sure I was sleeping for the night. School night, and suddenly I remember vividly having a dream where my stepfather and I were driving down a road in my mother's 1990 Dodge minivan. My stepdad asked me to grab a map from between the seats. Then the bright white light hit the van and everything 
powered down but the radio. I could hear the music and see the digital clock on the dash. It, it was 101. I vividly remember being unable to move or talk. I could make slight noises but no words and everything was instantly in slow motion, even the car. I remember a slight warmth from the bright light. My stepfather seemed to be like a statue. Then the light got so bright, everything went black and blank. I woke up in bed. Strangest part was when I started getting ready for school, I couldn't shake the weird electric feeling or sensation. I noticed in the mirror a black mark on my arm. In the center was an ellipse-shaped skin color, kind of, with two almond-shaped black marks on the skin tone ellipsed. Okay, this was before the internet, so we did not have the cameras readily available, so I tried to trace it on a piece of paper. Then I scrubbed it, almost raw, with no result. The marked looked like it was under my skin, like you would see a few layers of skin over it. I was scared to tell my mother due to several reasons, so I went to school. When I arrived, everything was normal. Then I had a flash in my mind of my pencil rolling off my desk and falling in a very particular way. I was jolted by a classmate bumping me and asking me if I was okay. I asked why, and he said I seemed spaced out. He kept asking if I was okay, so I decided to tell him I had a weird mark on my arm after a weird dream. <laughs> That's pretty bold. I showed him and he said, it looks like a tattoo. Of course, rumors started to fly that I had gotten a tattoo at the age of 13 and I was pestered by many to show them my quote tattoo, which I didn't because now I was super embarrassed. I left school early and went home very upset over the entire incident. I tried to scrub the tattoo off and no change. I was worried if my mother saw it, she would be angry, so I went to bed early to avoid her. Too scared to sleep because I didn't want to have that dream again, I decided to play with Legos. <laughs> Next thing I remember was I woke up in my bed. Next morning. Had that confused feeling as to what happened the night before. Went to the bathroom to get ready for school. That's when I noticed... The tattoo was gone. Oh, wow. All evidence of me trying to scrub it was gone. No scratches or redness. I was so happy, but confused. I went to school quickly to show off my arm to those who made fun of me the day before. That it wasn't a tattoo and no one seemed to know what I was talking about. Oh, that's wild. The original f friend I showed it to seemed to be distant now. So now, even more confused, we carry on with the day. During science class, at the exact sentence from the teacher, I don't know what they're saying here, and time during the lesson, my pencil began to roll off my desk and land the exact same way I pictured it the day before. I figured I was going crazy and chalked it up to some voodoo deja vu and never spoke of it again because of the fear of being locked up in an insane asylum, literally. What? That's so crazy. I asked my mother if anything was weird and she thought I was, she thought I was for asking. Okay. Since then, I have had a constant feeling of being watched from the inside, like a scientist monitoring an experiment in a petri dish more on a research level i have also had weird sensations of being drawn to locations for no reason at all and then feeling like i was home even if home was several thousand miles away i use this to my advantage to this day with help determining where the next vacation is going to be huh. i have always figured it may be a dream but I have recently seen a show on MUFON and some cases or parts of cases resemble experiences or thought processes 
I have. I'm sure it's nothing, but my curiosity is piqued. Did something happen, or did I just eat some bad meat <laughs> before bed one night many years ago? Oh, wow. It sounds like you were tagged, totally tagged, right? Right? We're, we're, we're all pros at this, right? Alien abduction tags. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, they do tell people where to go so they can meet them and abduct them again and experiment on them some more. Scary. Hi, it's Jamie, progressive number one, number two employee. Leave a message at the... Hey, Jamie, it's me, Jamie. This is your daily pep talk. I know it's been rough going ever since people found out about your acapella group, Mad Harmony, but you will bounce back. I mean, you're the guy always helping people find coverage options with the Name Your Price tool. It should be you giving me the pep talk. Now get out there, hit that high note, and take Mad Harmony all the way to nationals this year! Sorry, this is pitchy. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Just scary. All right, Alien Encounter in Tampa, Florida. Ooh, a serious blast from the past. This occurred March 19th, 1979. Playing in Playground. After event, businessmen drove up and began cross-examining us about what we saw. Oh, men in black. Never heard them called businessmen before. It's kind of funny. As a seven-year-old, I was in bed, went awake, and everything began to go into a freeze-frame mode. For instance, my father was entering my bedroom and he froze in mid-stride. I lost consciousness. The next thing I knew was my aunt found me in my bed at 10 the next morning and took me to her house. Later that same day, I was in the playground in my neighborhood, hanging upside down on the monkey bars with a childhood friend. We were looking at the sky when a large, shiny object came hovering over us and very close. It soon departed. Within minutes after it departed, two men in suits drove up in a government-looking sedan and began to question us as to what we saw. They told us to forget the incident, as it was just a weather balloon. <laughs> I have been living with this event for now close to 40 years, and am writing a book about the series of events that happened that night and the following day. Well, hey, if you're writing that book, uh, get in touch. That sounds fascinating. We'll definitely highlight that, won't we? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. All right, UFO sighting in Searcy, Arkansas. This occurred, eh, it's a slight blast from the past. February 29th, 2012, saw an object that looked like a radio tower, then realized it wasn't. So this event took place in what I would approximate as March 2012. The reason it has taken me so long to report it was because the thought never occurred to me until now. But I can still clearly picture the event as if it happened yesterday. At the time, I was living in a rural area near the town I specified in the report. We decided to go into town and buy dinner from a restaurant rather than cook something at home. I was with one other person who was driving the vehicle as we went into town, as we so often did. It was late evening and the sun was going down. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. <coughs> ah, there we go. Our order at the restaurant took an abnormally long time to prepare. So, by the time we were heading back home, it was dark out and we could see the stars above us. We were driving back home to the rural area where we lived when this event took place. We were driving on the highway, specified in the report, and up until the event, our view of the sky to the southwest was obstructed by tall trees. Then, as we took a turn and the area to our left opened up, we could see what looked at first to be a very tall radio or cell tower. We both remarked to each other that we didn't remember there being a tower over there. That's just the thing. There wasn't and still is not a tower out there. Upon realizing this, we both began to observe the object or objects more closely. The main thing that drew our attention was a large, unwavering, and immobile 
orange light that, from our perspective, looked to be about the size of a circular tablet of aspirin. Behind it were three smaller white lights which seemed to be hovering in formation. The fact that the lights weren't moving or flashing indicated to us that we weren't simply seeing airplanes in the sky. And that was why we thought it was just a very tall aerial tower at first. We observed the lights for at least five minutes as we drove on the highway, but because someone was rudely tailgating, don't you hate that? Wisconsinites are the worst in tailgating. You guys really own it. Own it. I'm from Wisconsin. Own it. Tailgating is not just for a Packer game. It's for anybody driving a car in that state. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Rudely tailgating us, we were not able to pull off to the shoulder and take pictures or a video. This is the one part that I can't exactly remember. Whether or not we were able to see the stars in between the formation of lights. So I'm not sure if they were four separate objects or if they were lights on one single craft. If it was one craft, it would have been absolutely massive. The formation of the four lights made the shape of an almost triangular rhombus. We both knew that we were seeing something strange, and although I can't speak for the other witness, I felt a sense of dread and anxiety, as if I wasn't supposed to be looking. When we got home, we talked about the odd experience for a short while before going to bed, and essentially forgot about the experience that happened so much. I spoke with the other witness before making this report to verify what we had seen and it seemed like he hadn't really thought about the experience again until I reminded him of it just tonight. I've thought about it a few times over the years but never felt compelled to report the sighting until now. We lost sight of the lights when we turned off to the highway on our way back home, but due to the amount of trees in the area, it would have been impossible to observe the lights from where we lived. That was pretty cool. That's a, that's a pretty interesting one, wouldn't you say? <clears throat> Sorry, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> Lord only knows why. Ugh. Okay, I'm going down. I'm scrolling. I want to go to a paranormal point of some paranormal stories. And these stories are all having to do with aliens. Isn't that cool? Yes. So let's hit it. This one is called The Glowing Light. Not last Valentine's Day, this person is stating, but the one before. My girlfriend was attending school three hours away, so I really got to see her, and we planned on renting a hotel room to spend the weekend together. Everything was peachy until we went to bed, probably around 11 or so. Sometime in the middle of the night, I don't know when, since the alarm clock wasn't lit up, I woke up to a kind of gray-blue light coming in the window, like on an overcast fall day. Thing was, it was barely coming in the window. The hotel room was still pretty dark. Next thing I know, the door slowly and smoothly swung open and there's only a single glowing light coming from the hallway which is weird because I've never been in a hotel that didn't keep the hall lights on 24 7. My girlfriend is screaming and I've never been so inexplicably ticked off in my life like hearing my own heartbeat, bald fists, and all that. I could feel something was coming into the room, but I, quote, woke up before I could see anything. The next morning, I asked my girlfriend how she slept, and she said she was just fine. I couldn't help but think it was a dream, but it felt way too real to be just my imagination. I'd seen some weird crap in the sky before, never dwelled on it or anything, but I've got no doubt in my mind now that it wasn't just in my head. Wild. 
This next story is simply called The Grays. I have definitely been abducted up until I was around 17. It happened quite frequently. It seemed every night for a period of time, it was always what people call grays. The very first memory I have of a gray, I was in first grade, I woke and turned over and there was one standing beside my bed just staring at me. It couldn't have been any taller than two and a half feet to three feet. Shorter than I was at the time, and it was wearing a V-neck, silly-looking black t-shirt with silver trim around the V-neck. There was also a V-looking symbol on the right chest of the shirt. As soon as I looked at it, I blacked out. And it seemed seconds later my mother was waking me up for school. That is my earliest memory. Well, just a victimize a child like that that's just sick this next one it's called the creature happened to me from age six through about mid 30s first encounter was around age six I woke up to what you would call a gray in a shared bedroom with my two siblings who slept through it I startled the creature and it glided and ran down the hallway and ran through my parents' closed bedroom door. I opened the door, and it was not in the room. It had vanished. Nobody else saw this encounter. Many additional encounters in the years to follow. I've never spoken publicly for fear of ridicule. Through my teenage years, I do not remember any specific events Next specific memories are around age 25 when I moved to a third floor apartment, top floor. I remember the sound of the shiny and tiny shuffling feet coming down the hallway and then being completely unable to move. They came into my room and surrounded my bed, four or five smaller grays and then one of the two taller ones that seemed to be directing the operation. There was no verbal interaction, but they made a sound like a clicking noise, which I assume was them speaking to one another. They would touch a metal rod to my shoulder, and I would black out. Usually, I would wake about 8 to 10 hours later, sometimes as much as 24 hours later. Once I woke up locked outside of my back porch in my underwear at 2 in the morning, well, that was inconvenient, no memory of what happened during that time. You know, I've heard of that, too. I knew somebody that happened, too. They were found walking outside down the street. And they were a small child. And they all they remembered was seeing a bright light. Darn aliens. Evil pieces of garbage. Not cool. Not cool. That's all I'm going to say. Well, I will say this. I want to thank you all for listening to UFO Headline News with me, Heidi Hollis. Be sure to check out UFOHeadlineNews.com every single day. And also tune into my other two weekly shows, The Outlander on Fridays and The Kevin Cook Show on Tuesdays. Both shows are at 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central. And check out my paranormal comic strip at TheOutlandersComic.com. Direct links can be found to everything I mentioned at HeidiHollis.com. And remember, if you've experienced anything out of the ordinary and want some level-headed advice, or if you've seen a UFO and want to share, be sure to write me at my site, UHN at InceptionRadioNetwork.com. Remember always to keep an open mind so you can stay informed and inspired. Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law.